Well, it is our frenzy favorite this week. You can't help but smile every time you watch this video of the Harrisburg Cougars going wild after Micah Parsons is selected by the Dallas Cowboys in the first round of the NFL draft. Unforgettable celebration as they root for the former Cougars star. It's been a chaotic week of local sports. We're all over it. I'm proud to be part of some historic moments. Parsons going in the first round. It's also our first time having a Bears broadcast on the NHL Network. Plenty of job satisfaction in the Fox 43 Sports Department. Welcome into the frenzy. I'm Todd Sadowski, Andrew Callista, Alex Cauley, and Lindsey Barna are at the ready. We begin with our Pride of the Lions. He's been very open about his family's allegiance to the Dallas Cowboys dating back to high school. That's not an easy thing to admit around Eagles and Steelers fans. Harrisburg's Micah Parsons even went on record to say he wanted to start his NFL career where he finished his college career at AT&T Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys. And so here is the family reaction in the green room in Cleveland on Thursday night after the Cowboys fulfill his boyhood dream. He starts his long walk up to the stage. There's Coach Franklin to greet him. The moment starts to sink in for Micah, gets into the tunnel, approaching the stage. Hey, first needs to stop and put on the fresh Cowboys lid so he can then see the crowd and the commissioner just ahead opens up his arms to prep for a big hug. And I love this as he asks Roger Goodell, are you ready? Are you ready? Because here I come, 240 plus pounds of excitement, jumps into the commissioner's arms. What a moment for Micah. And backstage, he was asked if opting out this past season cost him a chance to go even higher than the 12th overall choice. I'm a competitor. I hate not playing football. It's been a long time since I did a year without playing football, man. So. Um, it hurt me. I'm not going to say I did it better for my future because, you know, I feel like every opportunity you get to feel, you always get better. So I'm not saying I didn't get better, but, you know, missing football and not playing really sucks. So um, I would say, but, you know, being here today and getting drafted by the Cowboys meant everything to me and my family. So um, it's a true honor. So all of that takes place on late Thursday night and Friday. Well, it's all about visiting his new NFL home. The wheels touch down in Dallas. Here he is with his family arriving at the Cowboys massive practice facility in Frisco, Texas. I've seen the place. It's unreal. His son is with him. Other family members make the trip on one of the most exciting days of their lives. And once they go in, a slew of cameras greet Micah along with some fans. He stops to take a few pictures in his Harrisburg versus everybody hoodie. He's ready to challenge himself against the best in the league. It's a blessing to me. This is all I ever wanted. And now that I'm here, I can finally live out my dream and, you know, go to work with some of the best players in the NFL. It's like heaven for me, you know, like I said, you know, just to sit here to witness my son live out his dream is just amazing. And then to be a, with my favorite team, it couldn't be written no better. And the youngest one in the group, Malcolm, steals the show in front of the cameras. That's Micah's son, who had fun with the plane ride and actually had a birthday this weekend on Saturday when he turned three years old. A thrilling day for the entire Parsons family. And soon after Parsons is taken, Jason Owe doing a draft dance on Thursday night as the Ravens select the defensive end with the 31st pick end of the first round. They love his potential as a speedy pass rushing end to wreak havoc in opposing backfields. He announced he'll now go by his given name, Odafe Owe. The Steelers then take Nittany Lions tight end Pat Fryermuth in the second round on Friday. He's off the board on the 55th overall selection. They like PSU tight ends, think Jesse James. The Penn State then waits until the seventh round for the next Nittany line to come off the board. And then it happens in bunches. Three lines drafted in a row. Shaka Tony heads to Washington. Center Michael Menick goes to Arizona. Offensive tackle Will Fry scooped up by the Colts. The early returns on Dallas's investment in Parsons seem to be sky high, but when you land where you always wanted to be, there's always the expectation that there may be even bigger things on the horizon. Maybe that's why when the current group of Cougars heard Micah Parsons' name called, they couldn't help but go nuts. A few words to send a room full of Harrisburg Cougars into a frenzy. Very excited. I can't wait to play with them on Madden. You're playing on the same field NFL players playing on now. The thought on everyone's mind, Micah knows Big D very well. 
The Cotton Bowl MVP reminded everyone about this tweet over a year ago after his selection. It didn't matter where Parsons went for current members of his former team, but bragging rights if he was on their squad. Thinking the Giants is going to get him and then, you know, ended up making a trade and then it's like, oh, my. So it, it, it was it's a great experience, though. Even as a Giants fan, Coach Cal was all smiles. So, too, are the young Cougars. Great. I think it's great. It's going to be a great team. Defense going to be crazy. Dude, you called it. You were one of the two guys that called it. Yep. It is, that's a good pick. That's a good pick. They need Micah. He's going to snap. Parsons always repping the city of Harrisburg. He says he wanted to be a role model. He is well on his way. You gave Harrisburg hope. You gave most of the kids hope. And that's just the best thing. Parsons gets the key to the city of Harrisburg on Monday. For more on Micah, check out fox43.com. When you're thinking of standout athletes from the 717, Market Street in Harrisburg has seen its fair share. Before there was Micah Parsons with the Cougars, there were names like Ricky Waters and LaShawn McCoy rolling opponents at the rock pile at the old Bishop McDevitt High School. Actually, to be honest, I mean, his, his level is a lot higher than what my level was when I was at that time. You know, and I think he's driving to a great place. Shady was back in the Berg this weekend as his foundation hosted a vaccine clinic, but the former Crusader was moved by watching Parsons on draft night. Like I've, I've seen guys go to the draft, but I never had a guy in my own town on TV because I was the guy. So it was like now as I'm watching, I was so excited because I get to see the, the, the emotions from the family, from the dad, from the mom, his excitement, his tears. I've, I've seen it, but I've never seen it where it affected me because we're from the same town. McCoy has hosted many events in the region since going pro and even wore 717 on his eye black back when it was allowed by the league. So he was just as excited to see Parsons boasting about Harrisburg all week. I'm happy that he's so big on Harrisburg because I, I know he'll come back. Because I didn't have no I mean, other than my brother, and it's different because he's in the same household as me. I never had like an NFL guy from our, our town. I'm sure there will be a kid, you know, like Micah, uh, they'll watch him, he's, he'll meet him and stuff. I'm like, wow, like he's from here? I can go to Penn State. I can be, you know, because it's, it's all about dreams. And while McCoy is happy for Parsons' success, there are limits. I'm rooting for him, even though he's in my Eagle division where I'm always the Eagle, <laughs> you know, so that's going to be tough. One segment down, three to go as we hit the gas into the fast lane. She jumps into the 358 sprint car without ever racing any other division, leads all 20 laps and captures her second career feature. Stay with us, that's next on The Frenzy. Welcome back to the Sunday Sports Frenzy. She doesn't want to be looked at any differently just because she's a woman driver. She's there to do the same job to end her night in victory lane. 358 driver Ashley Capetta captures her second career feature at Lincoln Speedway. I knew that I had to step up my game that much harder because if not, then I was going to have to settle for second, possibly third or even worse. But we weren't there to finish second, third or fourth. It was either I won or I was in the fence. <laughs> she starts on the pole and leads all 20 laps of the Weldon Stern and Memorial Race at Lincoln Speedway. This might just be her second career win, but something oddly in common. 358 driver Ashley Capetta won her first race on her first sponsor's birthday, then won her second during the Memorial Race. Carry that the whole way up through for nine years, a great friendship and so on and so forth, and then to win that for her, that was just really special. Growing up at the track and countless nights at Lincoln, working on sprint cars, trying to learn it all. It was only a matter of time until she would race. Ashley had the idea to build a sprint car as her senior project. And now her parents' garage is a permanent shop. She spends four nights a week in, nearly a decade later racing the only thing but a 358. Countless hours at auctions and flea markets to get where she is now. I went to the auction houses and I bought big box lots full of junk and I'd clear off all the tables and buy all the stuff that was left over and then I'd go to Williamsburg flea market on Sundays. I'd pack my little Integra full. They, the old guys up there used to pick on me and say to pack that thing like a sardine because I had it full. Drivers that showed her the ropes and inspired her keeps her aspirations to one day race a 410 sprint car. 
Saturday evening racing at the fabulous Lincoln Speedway. Tim Wagman wins the B and Matt Campbell somehow passes two cars on the final lap to be the final transfer. Scott Fisher on the pole. Nice to see Corey Haas back and two is outside. Haas around the halfway point. Snap, crackle, pop coming from the engine. He pulls off and hands the lead to Chad Trout. Coming to the final lap, Dietrich Siegel and Raymer trying to reel in Trout as he starts to swim up on lap traffic. As Trout sees the checker, Raymer then pulls the slider on Siegel, but Siegel sticks his nose out right at the line for second. Much needed win for the 1X. Gets to celebrate with Buddy, but this win means more than any other honoring former official Mike Yapel. Great night to win. Um, you know, Mike was a great guy for anybody who didn't know him. He would do anything for anybody, and I'm just honored to win on a night for Mike. 358s at Lincoln. Many have reached out. Zane Rudisil is doing well and is home from the hospital after a nasty wreck. In the B, Kane Eichenlob punts John Stewart out of the way, causes Justice Forbes to also spin. Eichenlob takes himself out with the damage to his car. Young gun Riley Emig wins the Conti to the feature. He parades them to the green flag. Jeff Warbaugh adds to his winningest ways, not just his 18th career victory at Lincoln. Over to the Speed Palace, Anthony Macri started six battles. Brent Marks. Marks wants to pull the slider, but a lap car works in Macri's favor. Macri wins his second feature of the season, but I'm not done talking about Marks. After winning Sealands Grove last Sunday, second at Portland, Sunday racing at Baps for the Kevin Gobrak Classic. Marks grabs the feature. Pretty exciting for him to jump back into his family car. Yeah, a heck of a debut for Bears goalie Hunter Shepard on Sunday afternoon as shutout is seen all across the country on the NHL Network. Our fourth broadcast here on Fox 43 of Bears Hockey was picked up by the National Network. Shepard shines in front of a large audience of hockey fans in North America. Now the Caps, they got a deep roster of goalies. It's been difficult for him to break into the lineup behind guys like Zach Fucali and Phoenix Copley. Brett Leeson gives Shepard and the Bears a lead in the second period off the faceoff. It looks like he's going to recoil and then fires the wrister, goes up high stick side to open up the scoring. And it's hard and it's up to Shepard to keep the Phantoms off the board. Nice job on the breakaway as he stonewalls the score right there and against power plays. The Bears kill six penalties with Shepard never flinching. Very confident performance late in the third. Here's the formula. It's a close game. Good defense. Pona pulls the goalie and the Bears poke it away and finish with an empty netter. Axel Janssen Fialbi does the honors. Seven straight win at home. Final is two zip. Good guys. I mean, not a lot of action, but a couple decent opportunities in the first period and kind of make a couple of saves and settle in. And then, you know, obviously there's more action in the second and the third. But uh, I think going out and just getting the first period under my belt without any major mishaps definitely uh, gave me some confidence. I don't see a, a foot off the gas. I don't see a uh, finish line in sight. Let's let's coast through this thing so that that um, that gets me energized. That gets me fired up. And today's victory gives Coach Carberry 100 for his Bears career. Same two teams are on the ice in Allentown on Wednesday night for a 705 faceoff. But coming up, we got more with the hockey team in Chocolate Town. Alex Cauley sits down with the former and current voice of the Bears to discuss the rich history in the team's broadcast booth. More Frenzy is on the way. Welcome back for one of our most popular and unpredictable segments, the Frenzy Five. This week's collection of observations and strange happenings in sports includes draft room confusion, heartwarming community service, and a black bear near the tricky triangle. For my Frenzy Five, the Steelers take Alabama running back Najee Harris in the first round of the NFL draft. That really came as no surprise to many fans. The black and gold, though, do know what kind of young man they are getting. Prior to his selection, Harris threw a draft party at a homeless shelter that he and his family spent time at while growing up. So in co For my friend Z5, I want to give a shout out to the CD Rams football team. Being an athlete is more than just winning on the field. This past week, the Rams held their 600th community service day since 2006. Over 14,000 community service hours in that time. On Wednesday, the guys were doing some spring cleaning around campus. Guys, job well done, making it look good. 
I can barely hold back my excitement. Turkey from Pocono Raceway better watch out. A new sheriff in town might be clawing for his job. Among the many visitors, the track gets a Pennsylvania black bear enjoys a leisurely walk above the tunnel turn. I know the bear is probably like us and is clawing for some action on the track. It's unbearable. We have to wait, but it's less than two months away. So the Nationals get a special performance from their ace in D.C. You can understand why Max Scherzer works a little quicker than usual. His wife's waiting for him to finish up at work before she gives birth to their third child. Scherzer tosses a complete game in two hours and 37 minutes, says, OK, guys, got to go. Hustles over to the hospital. It was a planned birth. She did not go into labor during the game. So the Cowboys scored Micah Parsons in the first round, and they also made a trade with the Eagles. So how about we go inside the Eagles draft room? Eagles GM Howie Roseman loves this pick. Fist bumps all around. Everyone, though, not on the same page. Senior scout Tom Donahoe not enthused about the pick of Milton Williams in the third round. The look on Howie's face. Come on, man. As Birds fans say, Howie's got this. You got to admit, it's funny to watch. All right, that's going to wrap up this edition of the Sunday Sports Frenzy. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to see or share any of our stories, make sure you check out our website, fox43.com frenzy. For Andrew, Lindsay, and Alex, I'm Todd Sadowski, and we will see you next time.